welcome to Talking Mayhem Mania. It is the hot, hot, hottest show on the internet. I am your host and master of ceremonies, Chad the Shad. And with me right now is the man who had many feelings and many matches broken this evening, Mad Mike. Wasn't a good week for me, Chad. It was an excellent I, week for me. I, I, I had three matches taken away, and the person that I least wanted out of Space Jail removed from Space Jail. Yeah, yeah. Should have had three more, but oh well. We can't eradicate all your matches off the cards. Then we wouldn't have anything to do for weeks. The one match I wouldn't have minded <laughs> if like... was, the, the one match I wouldn't have minded if someone took away is the one match at stake. <laughs> well. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. Chad, it's just a bad news week. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. A bad week for Mad Mike, but a good yeah. week for everybody else. And you got Alex Cars. Again. Alex Cars rule. Again. So that's twice now in our mm -hmm. six weeks. Yep. We have many more weeks left mm -hmm. to go. I don't know. What's the record for Alex Cars? Uh, oh, I have a feeling I'm going to set it. Yeah. I have a feeling. Uh, ma ma chat, point of order. When are we going to start graduating some of these fucking matches? Ah. <sighs> I I, have, I know we've already we, passed the deadline for some of them, and now um, those have been taken away. I'm not entirely sure. Mm. You you should figure that out. You know, seeing as you're running this. Well, game. I'm not entirely sure any of those matches were there for four. Oh no, they were correct. They were four without being yes. altered in any way, yes. shape, or form. Yes. Uh, which one? That was probably what Beth Phoenix Belair. Uh, I believe that one. Yeah. I believe one of mine was too, but well, you know. here's the thing. Um, we're going to start graduating matches after the Elimination Chamber. Uh, you said that after the Royal Rumble. I, I just think you're never going to graduate. Is it? Is it still after the Royal Rumble? Yeah. I believe it is. Technically, he is correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the best mm -hmm. kind of correct. Mm -hmm. Technically, yeah. no. Uh, Dealing with the Elimination Chamber and what I think I want to do, it's uh, it's unprecedented, and it'll kick off the graduating of matches. I just think you've been dragging your feet, that's all. No, it's called world building. World building! <laughs> you use a world Gotta anvil for these... that? Are we sponsored? Uh... It's called storytelling. This is, these are the, uh, I'm not dragging my feet. This is this is Thanos after the it's, first. It's Avengers. called abuse of power, all right? It's yes. called abuse of power, yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it it right. entirely is. So, And we had two guests this evening before we go off on the tangent of, of what is good for Mad Mike. You cut to me as I was straightening is. out my core um, here. It's, it's Stevie LaBelle. Man. Hi. Guest. <laughs> There he is, the Anarchy champion, right? Anarchy, Anarchy Correct. division. Anarchy. Is it, is it the Anarchy division or the? I am the Anarchy champion, reigning anarchy. over the Anarchy division. Okay, excellent. And also joining you on the couch is Papa Judo. Hello. There he is. Yeah. You had quite the dilemma this evening. Taking your match, I did. I did. I, I was. I, there's a lot of things that I would love to see that are that are barred by economics. <laughs> yes, the rules of Mayhem Mania. Yeah. Yeah. See, abuse of power. <laughs> <laughs> but you did manage to uh, to slip a good match in there. Uh, I, I thought it was until I found out they had done it sixty times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> If I can't be happy, no one can be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, sorry, sorry, Bro sorry to ruin your dreams with facts. Brock Lesnar is out. I'm happy. Uh, no, Lesnar's match. Okay, well, he'll be back. It's out. Someone should have put him in the space jail. 
But we got we got Jericho out. We got Le Champion yes. freed from confinement, so it's a win now, overall. See, Jericho Freed has spread COVID. Very much, very much like uh, General Zod. Uh, Jericho was in space jail, and every time the prism shifted, it was one of his gimmicks. <laughs> he was just in there like Le Champion, and then it My was God, Lionheart. J, and then, Suit, suit, clean cut, Jericho. And then it was red dyed hair, Jericho. <laughs> Lionheart showed up every now and again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the pain maker was there, and like and Corazon de Leon. The many faces of Chris Jericho. He is now free to be booked <laughs> in Mayhem Mania. I'm just gonna book him for Brock Lesnar now. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> 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 he surprisingly they're very close in age aren't they mm -hmm. Brock yeah. can move a lot better than he can I think they also almost got into an actual altercation backstage a couple years ago they did yeah yeah. Uh, what was it uh, it was over it was Hardway and, Randy Orton match yeah it was over uh, Hardway and Orton yeah. right right and uh, Jericho was but Orton was in on it and was okay with it, and Jericho thought it was a slight yep. and yeah. took offense to it. So Jericho got worked is what you're saying. I think that's what it, yeah, I think it happened, and the Warner's like, nah, it's cool, it's, you know, it, it, it's not a slight, it's you know, it, it is, is what it is. It happened. I'm cool with it. It always and Jericho's like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> it is always good to be able to pop the boys in the back. That's true. Yeah. And there's something to be said about the stones of Jericho just muscling up to Brock Lesnar. After <laughs> just saying, yeah, I'll kick your ass over that. Like, Chris, no, you're not. <laughs> I mean, he was probably drunk. <laughs> this is a very good chance, yeah. This is a very good chance of that. There was probably a little bit of Grey, Glute, Grey Goose flowing that night. You know? I bet of the bubbly, even. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. If you read his books, he is a Grey Goose fan through and through. <laughs> Like some clear liquids, the clear mm -hmm. liquors. So, as you can tell, our usual usual partner here to play the game of guessing who made what match is absent right now. Mainstream ad is on the take, collecting dirt sheet money. <laughs> this is what he does now. He supplies dirt sheets with information. We're going to call them mainstream melts from now on. <laughs> and, yeah, mainstream melts are. He's, he's going to start giving. He, he's going to start giving matches like uh, crescent moon ratings instead of stars. <laughs> mainstream mats are. It's a good one. And we also had Sorg on the show. He made a pick um, or a uh, change of. Yeah, he made a match. With, with the, match, the, with the assistance the of Tina Keys. Yeah, with a little uh, little birdie in his ear, Tina Keys giving him a little bit of a push in a very good direction. Well, we should we should probably run down the, the new matches that are made, even if Matt's not here. Yeah, I was stalling a little bit to see if he see if he would join <sighs> us, but he's not here yet. Well, that, so. I mean, that's on him. That's yeah. on him, really. Yeah. I mean, if he wants to turn his back and abandon his family, that's all right. His true family, his wrestling friends, the mm -hmm. ones that brought him into this wrestling world. And we'll take him out of it. That's right, we will. On this, the day of Sorg's podcast. <laughs> Ronnie went first today. He was on the show. He uh, took Danhausen out of his match. Actually, he didn't just take Danhausen out of the match. He took Danhausen. Orange Cassidy and Abaddon took the whole match out, mm -hmm. and he had the nice. Fiend versus Sting variant Joker, Joker Sting. Yeah. Whoop you do. <laughs> yep. Guess shit match. match got eliminated there. Yeah, shit match. <laughs> shit match. Sorry. And our good Anarchy Champion friend here, Stevie uh -huh. Labella, had added Jeff Hardy to the. Darby Allen and Lee Moriarty match. Makes the match worse. 
Because <laughs> now they all have to slow hey, down hey, for Jeff. Hey, salty, bad luck. Turn on it down you. for Jeff. Salty is a bad luck on you, man. Yeah, but it's the only look I have. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you catch the name? It's Mad Mike, not Mary. And not not mad as in crazy. Mad as yeah. in. I'm upset. Yeah. Visibly upset. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, fuck Jeff Hardy. No, fuck you! Jeff Hardy is my favorite wrestler. That's a shoot, by the way. That's, that's fine. That's great for you. But I, since Jeff it was Hardy. a wee lad, so, uh, hey, fuck yourself! Side note, side note here. Mad Mike, I see you have... I know you like EC3, and you have, you're sporting his t-shirt right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. What happened to him? He looks like he's aged like fifty oh, I don't, years I don't, since he I don't left. Know. He was on a. I saw him on that. He, weird he's he's promo. defining his own narrative, whatever the fuck that means. I saw him <laughs> on that weird promo with, uh, yeah, with uh, Strowman and um, Killer Cross, Carrying Cross, and like they they look fine. <laughs> and then he showed up, and I was like, "Is there a portrait in an attic somewhere that has his face?" <laughs> on it? <laughs> oh my I mean, god. I, I guess Chad, that, Chad. It would be a portrait under some ring. Chad, can you write the novel a portrait of Derek Bateman? <laughs> he's under oh a ring, forgotten in some training center that's just aging. Or it's young, and he's just it's, wearing no, no, you know it, wearing it away. You know what it is? Somewhere deep in Titan Tower, there's one. Tops rookie card of Derek Bateman <laughs> from the original NXT, and it is in mint condition. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, just gets shinier, like it sparkles. It's just Slo uncanny. slowly it, reforms it, it the actually foil gains, wrapper around it. It gains the foil wrapping on it. No, it yeah, each year it gets more and more of its packaging. No. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, he uh, looks no, like. I, no, like, I just want to write the portrait of Derek Bateman. <laughs> <laughs> he just he looks he looks like like I don't know, he looks old. He, he's always happened? had an extremely angular face. Yeah, I, I don't think the goatee helps a lot. No, and the harsh like black and white lighting they had mm -hmm. didn't do his creases in his face any favors. They just nope. kind of sunk in. He, he had deep, deep. It, it kind of facial kind of looks like a road map of Utah, like like a topological map of. Utah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just you, you wearing a shirt made me. That's probably what I learned in wrestling this week. Was like, <laughs> EC three became like EC three hundred. <laughs> oh, what happened? Uh. Got out of hand. But uh, <laughs> we'll get back to the changes to the card here. <laughs> Papa Judo uh, did not like Brock Lesnar being on the card, so he did something about it. He took him out of the match and replaced him with Dolph Ziggler. So it's Dolph Ziggler versus Cesaro. Again. If you like technical wrestling and entertainment, that's probably a good match for you. Apparently, you can go back and study tape on it too. Yeah, we did some research. <laughs> Turns out it's not been it's not it's not an original idea. <laughs> but you know what? Some of the best ideas are just twists on old ideas. Well, at this point, maybe they could have like a walker on a pole match or something like that. You know? <laughs> oh, there's there's actually a match from from SmackDown in 2014: Ziggler versus Cesaro versus Tyson Kidd. Oh, that, that sounds kind of wonderful. Actually, that actually does sound pretty good. Nice. Like that, that was back in 2014. Wrestling since 2014. When did what Ziggler started with the Spirit Squad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look and see uh, what 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 season that is on. Peacock. What was his start date like? Ziggler? Oh, 2000. What? 2006. Easy. Six. Yeah. yeah. If not before that. Shit. And Cesaro, Cesaro's been there for a long time, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this match could be sponsored by Geritol. There you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, okay, uh, what's so... The, uh, uh, what's the, so uh, the, the if you joint want, cream if you want to, or something, too? Yeah. If you want to watch this match, it's um, uh, in Season 16 of SmackDown on uh, on Peacock. Mm. On the old Peacock. On the old Peacock. The old Peacock. <laughs> 
It so, actually sounds oh, like it'd be a really good match, too. Yeah. It probably is. Yeah. 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 So, with another move in Mayhem Mania, uh, Mad Mike reeling, just <laughs> reeling from his matches being decimated. Just torn asunder. He decided to swap Nick Gage out. Yep. For, with with Braun Breaker. Yes. So it was Nick Gage versus Wardlow, and a bunch of other people versus. Now, <laughs> I I, I want to say, I feel like I was shafted a little bit because on the official run sheet on WrestlingMamShow dot com, mm-hmm. it had Johnny Knoxville versus David Arquette as a night two match. Mm-hmm. Neither men are signed by WWE. And I wanted to make Nick Gage versus Johnny Knoxville. And I want to let the world know that you deprived them of that. <laughs> yes, I did. And I will again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Now, now it's, it's, it's uh, Knoxville just recently took a a payday, I'm assuming he didn't work that rumble for free, or the Raws beforehand. There was some promotional money, or some somebody was somebody was getting money somewhere through uh, whether it was mm-hmm. Dick House Productions or Johnny Knoxville himself. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, that is an error, and should be on night one, WWE. Uh, well, uh, you need to talk to to your man in the booth, then. That would be the man who's not on Talking Mayhem Mania right now, who oh. usually is mainstream Mautzer. Well, what are we going to do? Half a crescent moon to him. He's going to hear an ear. <laughs> Half a crescent moon. A quarter moon from that. <laughs> quarter from moon. Matt a waning gibbons, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I didn't know I was gonna like learn stuff in this in this whole podcast. Why, I, I got science I going on now, astronomy. Why do I know these things? <laughs> oh. I'm a I'm a just a plethora of bad information. Um so with the final move, Sorg decided that there were way too many people in that match. It bloated to an out of control standard, and he was gonna trim it. He took Dark Sheik, Cardona, Moxley, Strickland, and Breaker, sent him home, and he added the Gorillas of Destiny versus Pretty Boy Killers. You know, I didn't, I didn't think Sword would stab me in the front like that. But he, he, <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Around the front, Brute." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Beware the eyes of Sorg, I guess. Like he watched what you did. Mm-hmm. He, I saw, he you. saw the whole thing. He saw me getting more and more upset, and and Sorg Sorg saw the knife, and he's like, you know what? Let's twist again, like we did last summer. <laughs> and as the man who puts the pick order together, mm-hmm. hit it out of the park. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. That was a good run sheet there. That's how you build a main event. Maybe. I, I'm not a booker though, but Clearly. I had you I, I built I built Mad Mike that, that was going and then he made his move, he was feeling good, and then Sorg just made him lose his smile and kicked him <laughs> through the barbershop window. <laughs> but those were the five the five moves for week six of Mayhem Mania. We like to thank our guests, Papa Judo and the Anarchy Champion, Stevie LaBelle, for their contributes or their contributions to week six. They were wonderful. We hope to have you back. Hopefully maybe we can have you back again this year. If not, we will do this again next year for sure. Well I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank Mayhem you. Mania. Always a fun time. It is. And uh as someone who has filmed some of your matches, uh Mr. LaBelle, thank you. Yeah. You're a pleasure to film. Oh, thank <laughs> that, was, you. Uh, weird, that was weird. <laughs> thank that, you. That that is a weird statement. 
<laughs> Thank you. Well, it, well, it is. Well, it is. I've I've been, you know, filming uh, independent wrestling now for. Uh, at least a few years for Sorg. Yeah, I believe longer than I've been doing independent wrestling, so <laughs> I think you got so, seniority yeah. on me. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you um you did some of the uh um you were the sec- you were a security guard, correct? Or not not a security guard, but a, I would, uh, I would do security and then I became the guy that Sorg yelled at because we needed to flip flop the uh spotlights. <laughs> Cuz the one yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Um, guys, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, uh, you need to know this. Tyson Kidd has, uh, his cats on his kick pads for this match. Like, tied to them, or are they super glued? <laughs> no, 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 like, <laughs> airbrushed. Airbrush. <laughs> airbrush. Oh, and, oh, I, I, pictures yeah. of his cats. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, images. Okay. The, the other and one is going to be really and, weird. And this was a SmackDown in the yeah. UK, so. Ah. Is Natty there? Uh, no, Natty's not there. She's probably getting surgery somewhere. I thought you were going to go a completely different direction than surgery <laughs> with that. Well, you know, I used to say that, like, back... she's She looks a, a lot different now than she did back then. Mm. But back then, every time I looked at her, I could just see... Jim the Anvil Ninehearts just go T on her. <laughs> just get past it. Like no no knock on her. I was just like I just you're you're Jim's daughter and I cannot just My my wife is like obsessed with her Instagram because you see what she looks like, you know, in her ring gear. And then you look mm-hmm. at her Instagram pictures and you're like that is not the same fucking body I see going out to that ring in that gear. You know, all her <laughs> yeah. gear makes her look really thick and 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 you know, and then she has these Post, you know, these posts up where she's wearing like the, the like a sports bra and, and little, you know, bike shorts or whatever, and it's like her stomach is concave, <laughs> you know, and it's like how the hell does your gear make you look that bad? I showed yeah. I showed Mama and Papa Judo her uh, her old Heart Dynasty that gear, mm-hmm. and like it is absurd how much better that gear looks than the shit that they have been parading her around in for the past five years. Yeah. Yeah, it's... She's, she's also worked for the company for forever. Forever, yeah. She, she is the winningest and losingest female uh, wrestler in WWE. <laughs> By virtue of record. the fact that she has the most matches. Well, I mean... Oh, damn, her and Randy Orton. <laughs> Randy Orton has what the most matches in Raw history? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you Crazy. Know, you know what? Someone yes. should put on Mayhem Mania is uh, Orton versus Cena, number five thousand six hundred and eighty-two million and eight. <laughs> Haven't Randall, seen it before. Haven't seen Randall Orton, versus, Orton Cena. versus the Peacemaker. Make it happen. Ooh. Yeah, I don't think you need to be saying anything about somebody that's put a match on that's <laughs> been done before. I, I, it's a long walk home, you know. <laughs> it's my car. <laughs> I got the keys. Who will make it home? <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I might okay, have the so, advantage. So you guys want to know how many, how many actual matches have taken place between Orton, C- Orton and Cena? It has to be somewhere in the high hundreds, at least. All right, well, I'm just doing TV shows and pay-per-views. I'm not doing house shows. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. 77 matches. Jeez. Ooh, wow. That's Who was shockingly that? low that's, to me. That's 17 more than, 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 the, than the match I now, made. Now, hold on. If you factor in house shows... Uh, uh, they got to be like 200-some. I, I, I want guesses from everyone. 235. <sighs> okay. 194. Okay. 150. 257. Holy hell. Now, now here's here's the real fun. How many of those has Orton won? Oh. I'll, wow. I'll give you a hint. He doesn't have a good percentage. <laughs> he doesn't have a good percentage. <laughs> well, no, you're not allowed he to, does, you're not allowed to beat the not. face of the company. I don't know. 23%? Oh, no, but well, just, just guess how many wins. Oh, out of, out, out out of, of 200 out of, and... Out of 257 matches, how many how many wins does Randy Orton have? 42. 
25. 50? 34 wins. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Well, hustle, loyalty, respect. Do, 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 do. Now, now, if you look at... He said... All right, I'm, I'm going to go back to TV shows and pay-per-views because th- this song's, this stuff like this fascinates me. He has 20 wins on TV and pay-per-view. So he's only won 14 house shows against John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> out of 250 something matches that's putting somebody and over so, and brother. some of those and some of those were most likely DQ wins because oh yeah. that doesn't factor in wow that's a lot of that's a lot of FUs <laughs> mm-hmm. a lot and attitude adjust or yeah yeah and five knuckle probably shuffles probably both both names that's a lot, a lot of, of masturbation that. reference mm-hmm all right. Um, do you want do you want to hear some people who are undefeated against Randy Orton? Yes. Yes, I okay. do. Adam Cole. Baby. Alistair Black. Hmm. Andrade. Hmm. Balls Mahoney. Balls Mahoney. <laughs> Balls, balls, Mahoney. Balls, balls. Well, well, wasn't the wrong, wasn't the longest thing going if uh, if your last match was against Randy Orton, you got fired? <laughs> Probably. Like was um, that like last year? It was it, like, oh, you wrestled Randy Orton. Is your Eddie, are you Eddie Guerrero? Eddie Guerrero later. is ten and zero against Randy Orton. Well, I don't think he's going to take that uh, extra win back anytime soon either. Finn Balor is all is six and zero against Randy Orton. And uh, let's see, what's a, what's another interesting interesting one here? Wow. Uh, Sin Cara is two and zero against Randy Orton. <laughs> what's him over? Jeez. What's him over? And 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 the the best the the highest losing percentage to someone that Randy Orton has beaten one time is Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke has beaten Orton eighteen times, and he's only he's only won one match. Holy cow! And Orton is not putting anybody over on Mayhem Mania yet. It's true. <laughs> what are you doing? Get Randall in there. He'll make, he'll get Randall in there, and he'll put over whoever you want, brother. Orton only has a five percent winning percentage against Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, Randall Keith. What a what a team player. Well, that has been yeah. talking mayhem mania for this Matt week. Matt never it. showed up. No. He Matt abandoned never showed us. Up. We were trying we were trying to give him time. I started reading off random random Randy Orton stats. It's getting late. Ah. Getting late here on the yes. East Coast. What are you going to do? We'll just have to give him... Well, you know what? A uh, match did survive with a bunch of people in it that would make a match graphic very hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so I'm, uh, I'm, Honestly, yeah. his punishment is having to make that match graphic. Yeah. yeah. And next week, uh, should be able to have something very special planned. Something very devious. And unprecedented for the Elimination Chamber. So that's Chad the Shad signing off for Talking Mayhem Mania. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you inviting us into your ear holes or your eyeballs, wherever you view or listen to the show. Please spread the word about Mayhem Mania. Keep watching. We're probably not even halfway through this. So... Um, thank you, and good evening. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.